Berman University and the Southern Conference and its member institutions are committed to the principles of good sportsmanship. We believe that all student athletes, coaches, and spectators should strive to represent the very best spirit and tradition of college athletics. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner at all times. Those in attendance should report any act that goes against this policy to game management or security personnel immediately. Thank you. Check one, two, one, two, three. Ooh. Loud. Test one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Sandy Koufax walked out to the mound to pitch a fateful ninth where he turned in a no-hitter. But tonight, September the 9th, 1965, he made the toughest walk of his career, I'm sure, because through eight innings, he has pitched a perfect game. He has struck out 11. He has retired 24 consecutive batters. And the first man he will look at is catcher Chris Cruz, big right-hand hitter. Fly to center, grounded to short. Dick Krasuski is now at second base, and Koufax ready and delivers. Curve ball for a strike. <laughs> oh, and one to count to Chris Cruz. Out on deck to pinch hit is one of the men we mentioned earlier as a possible Joey Amalfitano. Here's the strike one pitch to Cruz. Fastball swung on and missed. Strike two. And you can almost taste the pressure now. Koufax lifted his cap, ran his fingers through his black hair, then pulled the cap back down, fussing at the bill. Cruz must feel it, too, as he backs out, heaves a sigh, took off his helmet, put it back on, and steps back up to the plate. 
Krasuski is over to his right to fill up the middle. Kennedy is deep to guard the line. The strike two pitch on the way. Fastball outside, ball one. Krug started to go after it and held up, and Torborg held the ball high in the air, trying to convince Vargo, but Eddie said, no, sir. One and two, the count to Chris Krug. It is 9.41 p.m. on September the 9th. The one-two pitch on the way. Curveball, tap foul, off to the left of the plate. The Dodgers defensively. In the spine-tingling moment, Sandy Koufax and Jeff Torboy. The boys who will try and stop anything hit their way. Wes Parker, Dick Krasuski, Maury Wills, and John Kennedy. The outfield of Lou Johnson, Willie Davis, and Ron Fairley. And there's a 29,000 people in the ballpark and a million butterflies. 29,139 paid. Koufax into his windup and the one-two pitch. Fastball foul back out of play. In the Dodger dugout, Al Ferrara gets up and walks down near the runway. And it begins to get tough to be a teammate and sit in the dugout and have to watch. Sandy, back of the rubber, now toes it. All the boys in the bullpen straining to get a better look as they look through the wire fence in left field. One and two, the count to Chris Cruz. Koufax, feet together, now to his wind-up in the one-two pitch. Fastball outside, ball two. A lot of people in the ballpark now are starting to see the pitches with their heart. The pitch was outside. Torborg tried to pull it over the plate, but Vargo, an experienced umpire, wouldn't go for it. Two and two, the count to Chris Cruz. Sandy reading signs into his windup. Two, two pitch. Fastball got him swinging. Colfax has struck out 12. He is two outs away from a perfect game. Here is Joe Amalfitano to pinch it for Don Kessinger. Amalfitano is from Southern California, from San Pedro. He was an original bonus boy with the Giants. Joey's been around, and as we mentioned earlier, he has helped to beat the Dodgers twice, and on deck is Harvey Keen. Kennedy is tight to the bag at third. The fastball a strike. <laughs> oh, and one with one out in the ninth inning, one to nothing Dodgers. Sandy reading into his windup and the strike one pitch. Curveball, tap foul. Oh, and two. And Amalfitano walks away and shakes himself a little bit and swings the bat. And Koufax with a new ball takes a hitch at his belt and walks behind the mound. I would think that the mound at Dodger Stadium right now is the loneliest place in the world. Sandy fussing. Looks in to get his sign. 0 and 2 to Amalfitano. The strike two pitch to Joe. Fastball swung on and missed by three. He is one out away from the promised land. And Harvey Keen is coming up. So Harvey Keen is batting for Bob Henley. The time on the scoreboard is 9.44. The date, September the 9th, 1965. And Koufax working on veteran Harvey Keen. Sandy into his windup, and the pitch, a fastball for a strike. He has struck out, by the way, five consecutive batters. And that's gone unnoticed. Sandy ready in the strike one pitch. Very high, and he lost his hat. He really forced that one. That's only the second time tonight where I have had the feeling that Sandy threw instead of pitched, trying to get that little extra. And that time, he tried so hard, his hat fell off. He took an extremely long stride to the plate, 
and Torborg had to go up to get it. One and one to Harvey Keene. Now he's ready. Fastball high. Ball two. You can't blame a man for pushing just a little bit now. Sandy backs off, mops his forehead, runs his left index finger along his forehead, dries it off on his left pants leg. All the while, Keene just waiting. Now Sandy looks in. Into his windup and the 2-1 pitch to Keene. Swung on and missed. Strike two. It is 9.46 p.m. Two and two to Harvey Keene. One strike away. Sandy into his windup. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. The perfect game. Field. It is 9.46 p.m. in the city of the Angels, Los Angeles, California. And a crowd of 29,139. Just sitting in to see the only pitcher in baseball history to hurl four no-hit, no-run games. He has done it four straight years, and now he capped it on his fourth no-hitter. He made it a perfect game. And Sandy Koufax, whose name will always remind you of strikeouts, did it with a flourish. He struck out the last six consecutive batters. So when he wrote his name in capital letters in the record books, that K stands out even more than the O-U-F-A-X. Blake's the major leagues. Well, there's never been better poetry in motion on the air than this call. And in 1995, we asked Vince Scully... Uh, to find out why he called the time in that broadcast, why he called the time every minute as the perfect game reached its climax. Every time I do a game that's a potential no-hitter, when it comes to the ninth inning, uh, the engineer in the studio automatically records the ninth inning. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's a Dodger or not, because if it's the opposition, we give him the tape. So he has it uh, for the rest of his life. Dennis Martinez, for instance, uh, he has the tape of his ninth inning when he pitched the perfect game against the Dodgers. Anyway, Sandy Kovacs had already pitched three no-hitters. And when I do the tape of a guy who's pitching a no-hitter, for his benefit only, I always put the date on the tape. So that 30 years from now, when he's playing it for his grandchildren, he will hear that on July so-and-so, 19th of so I do that as a matter of course. Well, now I've done that three times for Sandy Kopak. So as we were coming to the ninth inning, I wasn't so wrapped up in the perfect game and all of that drama as I was thinking, what could I do to make this a little extra special in case Sandy does it? And for some reason, I will never know why, because it means nothing to a baseball game, I started to give the time. And so as he walked out to the mound, I'm saying, and so at 9.48 p.m. on this da, 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 1965 at Dodger Stadium, Sandy Koufax, and then as each out was recorded, I would give the time, only thinking that this will be fun for Sandy to have 30 years from now, 40 years from now. Well, when the game ended, the next day, the one thing everybody talked about was how dramatic it was that I was giving the time, thinking I had this great sense of theater, when all the while, all I was trying to do was uh, give Sandy a little something extra for the tape. Well, Costello, I'm going to New York with you. You know, Bucky Harris, the Yanks manager, gave me a job as coach for as long as you're on the team. Look, Habit, 
If you're the coach, you must know all the players. I certainly do. Well, you know, I, mean, I never met the guys, so you'll have to tell me their names, and then I'll know who's playing on the team. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you their names, but you know, strange it may seem, they give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. You mean funny names? Strange names, pet names, like Dizzy Dean and... His brother Daffy. Daffy Dean. I'm their French cousin. French? Gouffet. Gouffet Dean, oh, I see. <laughs> well, let's see, we have on the bags, we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find I out. I say, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You're going to be the coach, too? Yes. And you know the fellow's name? Well, I should. Well, then who's on first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first base. Who? The guy playing first. Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? Yes. <laughs> Look, you got a first baseman? Certainly. Who's playing first? That's right. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is the fellow's name on first base. Who? The guy that gets the That's money. That's it. Who gets the money on he first base? He does, every dollar. Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Who's wife? Yes. <laughs> With that. Look, all I want to know is when you sign up the first baseman, how does he sign his name to the Who? contract? The guy. Who? How does he sign his That's name? That's how he signs it. Who? Yes. <laughs> all I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? No, what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? One base at a time. Well, don't change the players. Right? I'm not changing nobody. Take it easy, buddy. I'm only asking you who's the guy on first base? That's right. Okay. All right. <laughs> No, so what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on who's second. Who's on first? I don't know. Oh, he's on third. We're not talking about him. Well, let's <laughs> Now, how did I get on third base? Why, you mentioned his name. If I mentioned a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? What's on first? What's on second? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third again. <laughs> <laughs> Look, will you stay on third base oh, and don't go off it? All right, nobody will know. Now, who's playing third base? Why do you insist on putting who on third base? What am I putting on third? Oh, what is on second? You don't want who on second? Who is on first? I don't know. Third, third base! <laughs> Sure. The left fielder's name. Why? I just thought I'd ask. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Then tell me who's playing left field. Who is playing first? I'm not. Stay out of the infield. <laughs> I want to know what's the guy's name in left field. No, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on who's second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. <laughs> and the left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. Me, he's field. Oh. <laughs> well look, look, do. look. You got a pitcher on a team? Sure. The pitcher's name? Tamara. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you, then man. go ahead. Tamara. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's pitching? Now, listen. Who is not pitching? I'll who break is... your arm, you say. Who's on <laughs> first? <laughs> I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> got a catcher? Certainly. The catcher's name? Today. Today. And Tamar's pitcher. Now you've got it. All we got is a couple of days on the team. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm a catcher, too. So they tell I me. I get behind the plate, do some fancy catching. Tamar's pitching on my team, and a heavy hitter gets up. Yes. Now, the heavy hitter bunched the ball. When he bunched the ball, me being a good catcher, I want to throw the guy out of first base, so I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you've said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, that's all you have to do. Just to throw the ball at first base. Yes. Now, who's got it? Naturally. <laughs> Somebody's got to get it. Now, who has it? Naturally. Who? Naturally. Naturally? Naturally. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No, you don't. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's different. That's what I said. You're not saying that. I throw the ball to naturally. You throw it to who? Naturally. That's it. That's what I said. Listen, you ask me. I throw the ball to who? Naturally. Now, you ask me. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's it. Same as you. <laughs> don't change them around. Same as you. Go ahead. Now, get it over. I throw the ball to who? Whoever it is drops the ball and the guy runs a second. Yes. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it to, I don't know. I don't know, throws it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Yes. Another guy gets up and it's a long fly ball to be caused. Why? I don't know. He's on third and I don't give a darn. Well, what? I said I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. I mean, Come on. Right. Right. Ray, the one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner, here comes Knight and the Mets win. Now the 2-1, line drive to the base just as the score of the tying run, three to the plate, and he is safe, safe at the plate, the Braves go to the World Series. Heaven serve seats. Somewhere along one of the baselines and sat in there with children and cheered their heroes. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A three-run home run for Bucky Dent. The Yankees now lead it by a score of 
three to two. Ladies and gentlemen, Mazeroski has hit a one nothing pitch over the left field fence at Ford Field to win the 1960 World Series. They'll arrive at your door as innocent as children, longing for the past. The Pope arrived at Yankee Stadium. As one enthusiastic announcer put it, he is standing on second base. Reggie Jackson. once again for Furman University Baseball on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Good time for Jordan to pop number five of the year right here and get us right back in this thing. All the action, all season long. And he swings and he hits it high and deep. Left field. Oh, see ya. On air and online at FurmanPaladins.com or follow the Furman IMG Sports Network on the TuneIn Radio app. Furman Baseball. I'd like to say that it works that way all the time, but it doesn't. Now let's head out to the stadium to the voice of the Paladins, Dan Scott. Well, good evening, everybody, from Latham Stadium here on the beautiful campus of Furman University. Welcome to Paladins Baseball. This afternoon, first of three between Furman and the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. First ever meetings between these two squads. And the Paladins coming off of a weekend sweep at the hands of Ole Miss last time out have lost four in a row. They're eight and seven on the season, while North Carolina A&T off to a pretty good start, nine up and six down on the year. Battle of right-handers as Will Gaddis goes on Friday night, as always, for the Paladins. Marcelo Batances will take the ball for the Aggies. Not a bad day weather-wise. It's going to be a little bit cool as the uh, sun goes down. Headed towards a uh, game time starting temperature just below 60 degrees. And it is breezy right now. But compared to what we played in down in Oxford, Mississippi last weekend, this is almost like a sweat box. Uh, Regardless of 
the weather conditions. The Paladins have got to get the offense going. 33 consecutive scoreless innings. We're talking with Brad Harker. He thought they had three really good days of practice this week, especially in the batting cages. And they've got that extra day because of the game postponed with South Carolina at Floor Field back on Tuesday. So hopefully all things working in Furman's favor. They can get that scoreless streak out of the way early and get off to a good start in this series. When we come back, we'll hear from the head coach of the Paladins, Brad Harker, and we'll do that right after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, The Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, The Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and of course their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made-from-scratch desserts, and don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm-fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest that is the Hungry Drover. If you've been sidelined with an injury, sore joints, or back pain, the experts of Piedmont Orthopedic Associates can offer you both surgical and non-surgical care to get you moving again. Piedmont Orthopedic Associates' 15 surgeons and two spine physicians are all board certified and are committed to providing you with excellent orthopedic care. Visit us online at getmovingwithpoa.com. Carolina a and first ever meetings between these schools. Back at Latham Stadium, I'm Dan Scott with head coach Brett Harker. So how we feeling? It's been a week since uh, we've played basically starting a series with the uh, cold out uh, with South Carolina on Tuesday. I would imagine this team's itching to get back on the field. Yeah, we uh, we got a little warmer weather here today. Still got a little bit of breeze, but it's a, uh, it's a July day after what we went through at Ole Miss and early this week. And yeah, that was my first cold out, but I, I, I'm sticking to that was a good decision when I went and walked my dog that night and I almost died in my backyard. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, our guys are ready to roll. I think our swings are back on back on par with where they need to be. We're swinging confidently, and, you know, sometimes it's okay to just get away from the game for a couple times and make you appreciate being back out here and, and having different colors across the field from you. Well, one thing that, that you were able to get out of this, you were telling me earlier today that once the season starts is rare, is you're able to get about three good practices in and, and really spend some time working on some things. Yeah, I thought that uh, it was just what the doctor ordered. We uh, On Wednesday, I just really saw our swings break loose and we looked like ourselves again. And Elmi was driving the ball and everybody was up there. Um, Cam looked really good driving the ball. We just haven't been swinging with much authority lately, and all of a sudden it was like the confidence was back, and they started remembering, oh, yeah, we're a really good hitting team, and um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how that translate over to, to you know, a live pitcher today, but I'm looking forward to seeing our guys compete and get back to uh, looking like ourselves in the box. Well, one thing that hasn't trailed off during this offensive drought has, has been your pitching. Your starting pitching last weekend at Ole Miss uh, was outstanding. You pitched like that this weekend and, and starting conference play next weekend. You're going to be hard to beat. Yeah, I agree. They looked good. And we, we made an emphasis of you know, saying, okay, our pitching did good, but making sure that we never become two different teams where, hey, well, we pitched well or, you know, we hit well and you guys didn't pitch well. Look, we're, we're firm in Paladins. They don't, they don't call us uh, – you know, offense or defense, it, we're the Furman Palins. And to be honest with you, and I told our pitchers, yeah, we threw the ball great, but if we don't score any, we got to figure out to not let them score any. And we're, we're not going to become divided in that way. You know, we didn't play well um, down at Ole Miss, and we're, we're looking to play better as a team. Um, but to continue to throw the ball, obviously we threw the ball well, and we want to keep that rolling. You, you gave some of your frontline guys what amounted to about a game and a half off uh, from the sixth inning of Saturday and, and, and gave them Sunday off, I, I guess just to give them a little bit of a different perspective maybe? I did. I just wanted them, you know, I wanted to show them, look, we're in the business of winning baseball games. And at that point, they weren't giving us the best chance. And my job is to put the team that I think has got our best chance of winning on the field that day. And, I, you know, it's just a way of showing guys, hey, you always got people chomping at the bit. And look, those younger guys, I thought they played pretty well. 
we uh, defensively we turned five double plays that game that we didn't have our starters in and and uh, it's just it's just a shake up. We're looking we're looking to make sure these boys are staying hungry and, and passionate and playing the type of baseball that we've played since we showed up in the fall. And I think you're going to see us bounce right back and look like ourselves again. But you got an Aggie team in this weekend uh, under a, a third year head coach that looks like they're starting to make some improvement uh, in their program. They won 13 games all last year. They're already nine and seven this year. I, I know you don't have a, a, a great deal of scouting report on them. You're focusing more on what you do, but what do you know about the Aggies? I think they're just going to be a solid team. I, you know, they throw the ball pretty well. I think they got like a four and a half ERA, which in college is equivalent of a three anywhere else. Um, you know, they're hitting the ball well. They hit, I think, 303 as a ball club. They like to run. They're, they're pretty efficient when they run. They don't get thrown out a whole lot. Um, I think they got some pretty good athletes, and he's done. A, Ben's done a great job of building a good programmer there. And look, they're they're looking to do the same thing we are. They're looking to get to another level, um, and we're looking to do the same thing. And it'll be a, I think it'll be a great challenge to us to get going back in the right direction and defend our home field. All right, finally, uh, a little bit of injury news. Uh, Sims Griffith is out for this game. Uh, with a, a back situation you were telling me, and then David Webbel looks like he's done for the year. Is that right? Yeah, we tried to get Webbel through that non-throwing shoulder pain, and it, it just wasn't getting any better. matter of fact, it was getting worse with every swing. So he's actually going to have season-ending surgery um, next Friday when we go play Wofford. He's having shoulder surgery on his non-throwing arm, which we're very confident he'll come back. He'll be hitting in three months, throwing in five or six um, our full go in five or six, so he'll be fine. Um, that is a blow. I mean, he's, he's a really good freshman, and um, but he will be able to, you know, we'll, we'll fall for a red shirt on that, so he'll have, an, well, he'll have another year. And then just found out about Sims. Sims have had some back and some hip issues and tightened up on him today, and they went and got an MRI and found out what it was, and we know how to move forward with it and how to treat it, but he'll be down for today. All right, everybody else is ready to go. Let's go get one. Sounds good. Appreciate it, Dan. That's Brett Harker. Stay tuned. Starting lineups first pitch next here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. It's baseball season. Here at Ingalls, we know that as you root, root, root for the home team, sometimes you want more than just peanuts and Cracker Jack. And while we do deliver on your favorite ballpark classics, we're proud to offer a packed lineup of everything you need to make your next meal a home run. Ingles, a proud sponsor of Furman Baseball and the official grocery store of Furman Athletics. Go Dins! The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherrydale Point offers a dining experience that will have you coming back for more time and time again. Everything is freshly made on site, including the different varieties of bread and all the baked goodies. And the menu, Atlanta Bread Company offers a wide variety from hot soups and chili to hot and cold sandwiches and paninis. Even breakfast selections topped off with your choice of piping hot coffees. Come see for yourself. You'll love it. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherrydale Point, proud sponsors of the Furman Paladins and the Dan Scott Show. Back at Latham, <clears throat> back at Latham Stadium. If you're ready now, the starting lineups. First for the Paladins. Get all the music turned off here. Here we go. <laughs> or for uh, NCA and T, I should say, uh, under third-year head coach Ben Hall, they are nine and six coming into the season. They've already played three conference games. They're one and two in the MEAC. Greg White leads it off. He's in center field, batting second at third base. Brandon Melendez, Adon Ordonez catches and hits third. The DH and cleanup hitter is AJ Hunt. Timothy Rivar will bat number five and play second base. The right fielder and six hitters, Camden Williamson. At first base, hitting seventh, Kyle Clary. Jason King is in left field. He'll hit eighth and batting ninth at shortstop, Milton Rivera. Again for the Aggies, wide in center, Melendez at third, Ordonez behind the plate, Hunt the DH, Rivar at second, and Williamson in right with Clary at first. King and left, and Rivera at shortstop. For the Paladins, eight and six, um, or eight and seven, rather, under first-year head coach Brett Harker. Jabari Richards in the lineup, leading off. He's a DH, batting second in left field, Carter Groats. Landon Kay will hit third and play right. The 
cleanup hitter is first baseman Brandon Elmy. Sky Overton's in the center field. He'll hit fifth, batting sixth. The third baseman, Jake Crawford. Cam Whitehead catches and will bat seventh. Hitting eighth is Dylan Love. He's at second base. And batting ninth at shortstop is Brett Hebner. Again for the Paladins, Richards, the DH, Grode in left, K in right. Elmy at first, Overton in center, Crawford at third, with Whitehead behind the plate, Love at second, and Hebner at shortstop. Now we'll join both teams here in the stadium for the playing of the national anthem. Well, it is a uh, breezy night here at the Old Ball Orchard. The Paladins meeting outside the dugout, getting ready to take the field here in just a moment. Furman going here on this St. Patrick's Day with green jerseys, black caps and the white pants, and uh, A&T yellow jerseys with navy blue uh, on the uh, shoulders and collar area gray pants and the uh, yellow hat with the navy blue bill. You can hear the wind blowing into our field level crowd mic. Talk more about that when we talk weather here in just a moment, but the Paladins have taken the field and Will Gaddis heading out to begin his warmups. Well, Gaddis was simply outstanding on Friday a week ago at Ole Miss in a game in which the Paladins lost by a final score of 2-0. Seven innings, six hits, two runs, only one earned. Struck out six and walked two in the game and uh, suffered the defeat despite allowing only the one earned run. So on the season now, Will is one and two, but with a 2.42 earned run average. This is start number five. 26 innings, 21 hits, eight runs, seven earned, has struck out 24, walked six, and opponents hitting just 219 against him. He is continuing his warm ups. Ben Hall is in his third season as the head coach of this North Carolina A&T team. His second year without the interim tag on, he coached the 2015 season as the interim head coach, a year in which they went 10 and 36. He was given the job on a permanent basis after that season, last year, 13 and 41, 9 and 7 this year. So Hall's record so far, 32 
and 84 as the head man of this North Carolina A&T program, trying to build a foundation and turn it around. And uh, he's got them four wins away from their entire season total from a year ago. Of course, I got to know Ben when he was a player at Clemson. He was a teammate of Taylor Harbin. Good, good young coach. We are ready to go. Will Gaddis delivers the first pitch, and he misses low with the fastball. And we are underway 6.02, our official first pitch time here at Latham Stadium. Greg White, right-handed batter, swinging at the second pitch, and he chops it to a drawn-in Jake Crawford at third. Guns him out across the diamond to Brandon Elmy. And quickly, there's one down. Defensively for the Paladins, Elmy at first. Dylan Love at second. Brett Hebner at short. And Jake Crawford at third. Left to right in the outfield. Third Carter Groton. Sky Overton Landon. and Landon K. Cam Whitehead behind the plate. So, one out on two pitches. Here's left-handed batting third baseman Brandon Melendez. And he takes a strike on the inside corner. K.C. Smith, the home plate umpire. This evening, Will Prestwood on the first base side, Kevin Elsey on the third base side. Swing and a miss. Pitch down and away, and quickly Gaddis up. No balls and two strikes to the 300 batting third baseman of the Yankees. He's driven in five runs on the season. Stands right on top of the plate in that left-handed batter's box, and he takes it outside a ball. Gaddis working quickly, the one-two, and he struck him out swinging with the fastball by him. And quickly there, two down. Catcher, now it's Adon Ordonez, the catcher. He is off to an excellent start offensively this season. 327 leads the team in homers with three and in RBIs with 18 through their first 15 games, right-handed batter, and he chops it in front of the plate, actually off his foot. He went down in a heap, and Gaddis fielded it on a hop just to the third base side of the mound, but K.C. Smith out quickly to roll it a foul ball, and it's no balls and a strike. Dimensions, 330 down the lines here at Latham, 395 to straightaway center, 371 in right center, the short porch in left center, 350. Game time temperature 59 degrees, clear, breezy, wind about 12 miles an hour. There's a strike on the outside corner. It's 0 and 2 and blowing straight in. Gaddis looking for a quick and easy first inning. The 0 2 pitch, and he misses with a cutter outside. 1 and 2. Should Ordonez reach, A.J. Hunt is in the on-deck circle. Will Wines is 1-2 pitch, and it's lined to right field toward the line. That's going to be in for extra bases. K chasing it in foul territory as Ordonez coasts into second base with a two-out double. Ball in the outer part of the plate. He just reached out and hit it with some authority down the right field line. Kay had no shot. It landed about two feet fair and rolled into foul territory all the way to the fence where the bullpens used to be. And by the time Kay got to it and got it back to the cutoff man, Ordonez was easily in the second base. So that will extend the inning for A.J. Hunt. Right-handed batter, and the first pitch to him is swinging and a miss. Gaddis gave him gas upstairs, and he couldn't catch up to it. 0-1. 353 the average, two homers, 14 RBIs. So here are three and four guys been producing some runs for this team. The 0-1, strike two call, and another good fastball, and Will ahead. No balls and two strikes. First of three. 6 o'clock today, 4 o'clock tomorrow, 1 o'clock on Sunday. The 0-2, breaking ball, strike three called. Outside corner, locked him up. Inning is over. They get the two-out double, and that's all. Pair of strikeouts in the inning. Runner left 
Off we go to the bottom of the first. It's North Carolina A&T nothing. Furman coming to bat here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Stuck in a state of falling behind? Struggling to keep up with your kids, finances, insurance? Then let State Farm agent Steve Borkland in Traveler's Rest help you simplify and get to a better state. Because with Steve handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time for everything else. More money, too, because adding State Farm policies could mean earning discounts worth up to 40%. That's money Steve can help you put towards a college savings plan. Call State Farm agent Steve Borkland today and get to a better state with State Farm. At SC Telco Federal Credit Union, we're passionate about helping to improve the financial lives of our members. SC Telco is the first financial institution in South Carolina to offer a Price Lake Savings Account. The Save to Win account allows members to save money, earn interest, and have the chance to win cash prizes. When you're in front of us, you're the only person that matters. Find a location near you at sctelco.com. SC Telco looks forward to serving you. SC Telco is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Now, Gaddis allows just a two out double in the uh, top of the first inning. Now, the Paladin offense here in the bottom of the first will be hitting off of right hander Marcelo Batances. Coming in on the season four starts, two and one and a 235 earned run average. 23 innings, 23 hits, 15 runs, only six earned. Have to have command issues, 23 strikeouts, but 21 walks. And the opposition hitting 274 against him. Low 80s fastball will flip in a breaking ball. But looking at his numbers, just just straight raw numbers, it would appear that when he throws strikes, he has a chance to be successful despite the 21 walks in the 23 innings. His ERA just 235. Throw goes down to second base. And we are ready for the top of this firm in order. Jabari Richards, Carter Grove, and Chris Kay. Talked to Brett Harker about Jabari Richards today. He's back in the familiar leadoff spot where he hit pretty much all last season in his Southern Conference Freshman of the Year year. and has not been getting consistent at bats because of his struggles and because of a run of left-handed pitching the Paladins have seen. But starting today, from what Brett told me, you can expect to see him in the lineup for probably four or five games regardless. And he swings and he rockets one. Back into right field, straight away off the top of the wall. Picked up out there by Williamson and Richards, a big turn at second base. And welcome back to the leadoff spot, Jabari. He is standing out there with a leadoff double. Brett also telling me that he had made some adjustments this week during practice in the batting cages and keeping his weight back, not getting off balance out in front of the ball so much. And boy, he hit that ball with authority and missed by just a couple of inches of his second home run of the season. Now, Carter Grote, who, like the rest of this team, struggling average down to 276. Still looking for his first home run of the season. He's driven in seven. A run scoring opportunity here early on, and there's a pitch way inside a ball. 1-0. Kyle Clary at first for the Aggies. Timothy Rivar at second. Milton Rivera short. Brandon Melendez at third. Left to right in the outfield, Jason King, Greg Wine, and Camden Williamson. Don Ordonez behind the plates. The 1-0 pitch. Chop two-third. Drawn in was the third baseman, Melendez. Looks the runner back and throws out Grote for the first down of the inning. So Carter can't advance Richards at second. 
He stays out there with one out. And now Landon Kay, who's continuing to lead this team with a 388 batting average. And in RBIs with 14. He's second on the club in home runs with two. We'll give him some room out in right center field. And the first pitch to him is grounded to the left of the third baseman who picks it. Looked, he had a play at second base. Decided not to make it. And now coming to third is Richards. The throw gets by him. Down beyond the bullpen on the warning track, Richards scores. It's 1-0 Furman. And there goes your 33-inning scoreless streak. Boy, if Melendez had thrown to second, they had Richards hung out to dry. Made a nice pick off to his left, and now looks like Melin is it Melendez or is that the shortstop? That's Rivera who is shaken up. He was shaken up on the throw to third, covering as the ball and Richards all arrived at the same time. Shaking out his left arm, it looks like. So 5-3 on the out of K. For the second out of the inning, that advanced Richards to third, and then he scored on the throwing error by the first baseman, Kyle Clary. So the first run the Paladins have scored since the third inning of the Butler game in midweek last week. And now that goes by the boards. You can put it to rest and move forward. Here's Brandon Elmy with two outs. The base is empty, and he's swinging, and he fouls it off to the right out of play. 339 for Elmy. Three homers and 10 runs batted in. And he takes a strike at the knees. A good fastball from Patances. It's no balls and two strikes. Right-hander winds the 0-2. Struck him out. Ball just dived below the bat of Elmy as he took the big swing. And Batanzas has his first strikeout. But the Paladins get a run on a hit. There was an error, and nobody left. We have played one here at Latham Stadium. Furman won, and North Carolina a and nothing. You're listening to Paladin Baseball on the Furman IMG Sports Network. When you go in search of a fence company, what's your criteria? Experience? Trust? A company that gets it right the first time and stand behind its work? Then your search is over. Faulkner Fence has been Greenville's fence company for more than 40 years. Ed Faulkner started the business, and now Sun Todd continues the tradition of excellence. So regardless of your fencing needs, commercial, industrial, or residential, trust the company that Greenville has trusted for over four decades. Faulkner Fence, 864-271-4626, or online at Faulkner Fence Company. Hi, Furman fans. Dan Scott here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. One nothing Paladins. Been a while since we've been able to say that. Timothy Rivar leads it off five, six, and seven for the Aggies here in the top of the second inning to face Will Gaddis. Right-handed batting second baseman for A and T in the first pitch, a little bit low. Ball one, two fifty-seven average with three runs batted in for Rivar. The o or the one zero. There's a strike on the outside corner. One and one. Crawford about a step off the bag and off the line at third. Breaking ball drops in for a strike, one and two. And Overton out in center, shading towards right center, so a lot of room in left center field. Slider down and away, two balls and two strikes. Be interested to see how many people are 
here this evening. Swing and a miss on a fastball inside, strike three. And that's three of them already for Gaddis. Considering there's a little basketball tournament going on downtown. Right fielder, Camden Williamson. The ones who are here are prepared for the evening to turn a little cool as the sun begins to disappear. Here's Camden Williamson chopping one over the mound, and that'll sneak into center field for a base hit. First pitch swinging for the left-handed batter. That's just his fourth hit in 24 at-bats on the season. Came in hitting 130, and he's a one-out base runner. Now, Kyle Clary, who's in at 241, a right-handed batter. No homers. He's knocked in four runs. Enfield looking for a double play ground ball here. They turned five of them, and this might be one. Slow chopper. Nope, they only get a play at first as Hebner had to field it on the grass in front of second base. Took a quick look over his shoulder. Had no shot at Williamson and throws out Clary at first for the second out of the inning. But on Sunday, the infield rolled five double play balls behind Matthew Quarles and Billy Greenfield, who, Left fielder, Jason King. or excuse me, Jake Crawford, who I believe threw two pitches to get out of an inning. Jason King now with the tying run at second and two outs, and Gaddis starts him off with a fastball strike. Right-handed batter at 308 with five runs batted in. Fastball upstairs. One and one. Firming up one nothing here, top of the second. Aggies with the tying run at second and two down. Gaddis pitches and a foul ball right back at us. Hit the netting right at the top. One and two. Should King reach, number nine hitter Milton Rivero will be next. Gaddis ready with the 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball high, 2 and 2 the count. Aggies have been on a pretty good stretch of late, although they've actually lost their last two games. They're strike three swinging. Prior to that, they had run off seven wins in eight games, so they've been playing pretty well. Here, another strikeout for Gaddis is fourth. They strand a runner at second for the second straight inning, and we head to the bottom of two. Paladins leading at one nothing here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. I was surprised recently when I learned that Americans spend $80 billion a year on illegal sports gambling. Sure, that's spread out over millions of gamblers, but still, it makes you wonder where that money's coming from. Unfortunately, too often, it's coming from money that was intended to buy groceries, pay the mortgage, or even put children through college. If gambling's had a negative impact on your life, call the SC Gambling Hotline toll-free at 877-452-5155. Help is confidential and available 24 hours a day. A message from the South Carolina Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. Palmetto Pride, South Carolina's anti-litter and beautification organization, would like you to do your part to help keep South Carolina beautiful. Don't litter. Report litter bugs and litter hotspots by calling the Litter Buster hotline at 1-877-7-LITTER or by using our Trash Tracker app. Six and seven for the Paladins here in the bottom of the second. Sky Overton will lead it off. Then Jake Crawford and Cameron Whitehead. Yes. 
Senior center fielder at 264. And he takes it high from Patances, ball one. Homer and five RBIs for Overton. And he checks his swing. It costs him a strike on the inside corner. Melendez inside the bag at third, and that pitch up and in got him in the left shoulder. So Overton will go on down to first base. Lead off hitter aboard for the Paladins. Third baseman, Jake Crawford. And now Jake Crawford. Jake was one of the starters who basically sat down for almost a game and a half at Ole Miss did not start a play on Sunday. Runner goes, pitches swung on and missed the throw wide. Got by the second baseman covering, but the shortstop Rivera right where he should have been kept that ball from going into center field. So over to the stolen base. And he's in scoring position and a no ball one strike count on Crawford said he thought Jake's struggles at the plate were starting to affect him in the field a little bit, so it gave him a little bit of a different perspective, and he's back in there today along with everybody else, and he fouls this one toward the roof of the baseball building down the right field line. He's behind 0-2. Firming up 1-0, an unearned run in the first inning. Jabari Richards scoring on a throwing error. Now you've got Overton at second with nobody out here in the second inning. 0-2 pitch to Crawford. Overton's coming to third. Pitch is low. The throw, the third high. And Overton is safe with his second steal in this at bat. Melendez tried to deke Overton. He had to go airborne to make the pick. Then turn as if maybe the ball went down the left field line and then turned back immediately and slapped a tag on Sky, but he hadn't left third base. 1-2 to Crawford. is fouled back straight over our head now to play. Now the 1-2 again. And he came up and in on him, and Jake swinging out of plate protection and perhaps self-defense as much as anything. Grounded it to Jeff Kimmel down in the first base coaching box. So the count holding it one and two. Patance is pitching, and he chops it foul at the plate. Settling back into the box, taps the head of the bat on the plate. Now waiting as the right-hander gets the sign from his catcher, Ordonez. And the one-two again misses inside, almost hit him two and two on Jake Crawford. Cam Whitehead waiting on deck. Break-even pitch, and it's chopped foul over by the third base Dug out. Count holding at two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch again, and it's lined into right field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Scoring from third is Overton. It's two nothing Paladins. That's a great at bat for Jake Crawford, who fell behind 0 and 2 and just started fouling off pitch after pitch after pitch. Finally got a pitch up that he kind of inside outed on a line into right field to score over to third. RBI number seven for Crawford. And now he's at first with nobody out. For Cam Whitehead. 
Brett said it was Cam during batting practice this week that seemed to get everybody kind of turned around. First pitch to him is swung on and fouled back. Talked about the approach at the plate really for the entire team at Ole Miss. And used the phrase that looked like we were swinging with wet newspapers, but said it was this guy's adjustments in batting practice that seemed to spark the team this week. Lines that one hard but foul down the right field line. It's 0-2. So like Crawford before him in a no ball, two strike hole. Jake was able to battle at the 2-2 and then get an RBI base hit. Throw to first and Jake backhands first. Give him a lot of room down the left field line and he strikes out swinging. Came under the hands with a fastball and Cam couldn't catch up to it. One down, second strikeout for Batances. And now Dylan Love will hit. He was a late addition to the starting lineup. Sims Griffith, second time this year missing a game because of issues with his back. Good news is they got an MRI on it. Found out there's nothing major going on in know how to treat it moving forward. Couldn't play today, and there's ball one to Love, who's four for nine here in his freshman season. 444, that equates to, with two RBIs. The other piece of injury news, not so good. Here's a 1-0 pitch, runner goes, and a line drive into center field that'll drop for a base hit. Crawford hits second full stride on his way to third with a needless head first slide because the throw came into second base. Love continuing to swing a good bat. The play hit and run. Got him on the corners with one out, and Brett Hebner will hit. But the not-so-good injury news is David Webble, who was trying to play with a or play through a sh shoulder injury in his non-throwing shoulder. Uh, not able to do so. It was getting worse instead of better, so they shut him down. He's going to have surgery next week as Hebner taps it foul at the plate. And he'll be done for the season. Brett told us in the pregame, though, that he'll be swinging the bat again and three months and be full go in five to six months. They'll redshirt him, so he'll have four full seasons after this. They're really, really high on that young man. Hebner squares to Bunn and misses. In a safety squeeze situation. He's behind 0-2. Crawford had come down the line a bit at third and had to scramble back to the bag. So Hebner in an 0-2 hole, first and third. One out, a run in, 2-0 Paladins here in the bottom of the second. Patances will bluff to third and look back at first. Jamari Richards on deck. Right-hander ready with the 0-2 pitch. Chopper up the middle. That's going to get a run in. Only play for the shortstop. Rivera will be the first. Crawford scores from third to make it 3-0. Love advances to second, and Hebner, a productive ground ball out, gets his first RBI of the season. So now with Love at second and two down, two runs in, here's Richards, who doubled off the top of the wall and straight away right field leading off the Furman first inning and scored on the throwing error by the first baseman, Cleary. And he lines it back through the middle into center field, a base hit. They're going to wave Love around. Here comes the throw by the center fielder, White. It is up the first baseline. 
Safe at the plate is Love. On to second goes Richards, and it's 4 nothing Paladins. Fourth RBI for Jabari. If that throw is online, they probably get Dylan Love, but it was up the first baseline a bit, and the catcher, Ordonez, tried to backhand it, and when he came up, he left the ball lying on the ground. Taylor Harbin being very aggressive there, forcing them to make a play, and they couldn't. Now Carter Grote with two outs and Richards at second. And the first pitch is outside, ball one. Ryander with the pause at the belt. He looks at Richards back at second, delivers. And a swing and a foul out of play right side. One ball, one strike. Landon K waiting on deck. Three runs in the inning. Giving Furman a 4 nothing lead. 1-1 one, one to Grote. Down and away. 2-1. Despite the struggles that have his average now at 271 as he stands in at the plate, still hitting 333 with runners in scoring position. Chops that one foul, two and two. And 450 batting with two outs in an inning. Both of those situations apply here. He's two balls and two strikes against the right-hander Batances. Pitch and a flare down the right field line foul. Bounces off the tarp and lying in the middle of the warning track. Nobody gets it, so Jake Crawford will get some running in as he sprints out to pick it up. Tell you what, the uh, parents up on the veranda outside the baseball building, they're, they're set for any kind of weather up there now. 2 2 again. And that one hit him. Breaking ball that didn't. It got him in the lead arm. Second hit batter for Batances. And that's going to get pitching coach Jamie Serber out of the dugout and to the mound. They've got a couple of the fire pits or whatever you call them blazing up there. So they're ready for anything. Weather-wise. Four o'clock start tomorrow, 345 airtime. This is the only game on Fox Sports 1440 over the air this weekend. Of course, every game we do is streamed on their iHeartRadio app. But we'll be back on the campus radio tomorrow on Sunday, 95.9 as well as the live YouTube video stream and the audio stream via Stretch Audio. All right, meeting over. Landon K bounced to third. It was his ground ball out that precipitated the first run of the inning, our first run of the game in the first inning when Richards coming to third was safe. The throw by the first baseman Clary two-third was wild and Richards got up and scored. K takes a strike. He's behind 0-1. Richards at second. Grote at first. Three runs in, two down. Swing and a foul back. It's 0-2. Do you have our email up and running if you'd like to drop us a line? FermanBaseball at Yahoo.com FermanBaseball at Yahoo.com. Or if Twitter's your thing, Twitter handle Dan Scott Show. K in an 0-2 hole, right-hander pitching and a breaking ball down and away. The two hit batters already in this game for Batances. Look and see. 
his totals. Those are the first two that he's hit this season. Misses low and away again to Kate. Two balls and two strikes. About Ken Pettis being put on foul ball retrieval duty. Collecting those foul balls from the dugout. Skeleton staff here because of all the folks working down at NCAA basketball tournaments. So double duty for everybody. Swing and a miss. K's out on strikes. And the inning is over. But eight come to the plate. Three score. And we head to the third with Furman on top. Four nothing. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. When it comes to commercial vehicles, break through the clutter with a new Sprinter Worker from Freightliner. Otherwise, your work van isn't getting it done. The Sprinter Worker carries over a ton and a half with over 300 cubic feet of space and all match safety. It starts at just $32,495 with a service interval of up to 20,000 miles. Huge capacity starting at just $32,495. From Christopher Trucks, Whitehorse at I-85, ChristopherTrucks.com. Spirit Communications, built for your business and the upstate's choice for voice, data, internet, and fiber services. Let us show you the future with our cutting-edge, unified cloud-based products backed with live 24-7 customer support. Call 517-1200 or click spiritcom.com. Spirit Communications is a proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. Spirit Communications, keeping you connected. Well, Will Gaddis now with a 4 0 lead to protect as we move to the third inning. Dan Scott here with you on the network. Furman Baseball, Powell is trying to snap a four game losing streak. And so far, so good early on against North Carolina AT. 9 1 and 2, Rivera, White, and Melendez against Gaddis. Will's given up a hit in each of the first two innings. He has struck out four. Right-handed batting Rivera, big wide open stance. And he's hacking at the first pitch and fouls it out of play right side. 254 average, but has driven in eight runs, still looking for his first home run of the season. Crawford out. Step away from the cutout and about even with the bag at third. That pitch misses just off the plate outside. One ball, one strike. Pitch, ground ball right back through the middle. Skipped off of the top of the pitching mound into center field for a base hit. Will Gannis just got Charlie Brown. Third hit for the Aggies. First time they've had the leadoff man aboard and back to the top of the order for center fielder Greg White. Center fielder Greg White. White began the game by bouncing out the third. Handed batter and Gaddis going to work on it. First pitch in the air to center. Overton backing a few steps. He's got it, and there's one down. First email comes from Christy Love, Dylan's mother. Thank you for the commentating. Driving to Furman from Statesville to catch the rest of the weekend's games. Go Dens. Well, thank you for listening on the drive. And safe travels. I'll tell you what, been on the road a number of different places this week, and it has been crazy. Here's Melendez. Runner goes, bunt down the third baseline. Crawford comes, bare hands, throws, and he got it. Big stretch by Elmy. And put a star by that one. It was do or die for Jake Crawford, and he unleashed that cannon of his, fielding and throwing with the bare hand on the run, all in one motion. And he got Melendez by an eyelash. Two down. 
Rivera now at second base. And here's Adon Ordonez who doubled with two outs in the first inning, hit it right down the right field line. First pitch to him is up and in, ball one. Don Overton says he loves the St. Patty's green jerseys to shake off the Oxford Blues. Playing golf with the Robert Trent Jones trail in uh, Montgomery this weekend. Nice. Pitch off the fist, pop foul outside of first, and that'll find the second row of seats. So one ball, one strike. Talking about the traffic, uh, the basketball team last night on the way to USC Upstate left early. It's a ground ball to Crawford who was playing well off the bag. Tried to tag the runner going by, didn't, so he throws out Ordonez, and the inning is over. We'll tell you about the adventures they had on I-85 when we come back. But leadoff single, then he retires the next three, and we head to the bottom of the third with Furman on top, 4 nothing. This is Powell and Baseball on the Furman IMG Sports Network. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. There's a reason why year after year more people trust Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, see Dan Joyner Realtors, to get the job done. It's because we deliver the highest level of real estate services with the utmost integrity, quality, and professionalism. We love what we do, and it shows in every transaction. We've been the undisputed upstate market leader for over 20 years because we do what's right, we handle every transaction with a smile, and we're committed to making your home journey the best it can be. For your best move ever, contact Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. See Dan Joyner Realtors today. Visit cdanjoyner.com and let's get started. Four nothing Furman as the Paladins come to bat here in the bottom of the third inning. And it'll be the middle third of the order. Elmy Overton and Crawford against Marcelo Batances. Unearned run in the first inning, three runs and three hits in the last inning. And while no one's throwing down in their bullpen, they do have some folks congregating down there now. Brandon Elmy, the only man who did not hit in the three runs second, struck out swinging to end the first. He'll lead it off. Email from Rick Mullen, enjoying a little couch time with the wife, he says, the Dens and Dan. Must be a big couch. And he, too, loves the green jerseys here on St. Patrick's Day. Pitch inside, ball one. It was the uh, Reds Instagram account today posted a classic photo of Sparky Anderson from spring training back in the 1970s wearing the green uniforms that the Reds wore in those days. It was a good look. I think they were the first team to do it in the big leagues. 1-1 one, one to Elmy. Foul out of play right side. It's 1-2. and two. So Elmy behind in the count. Patanza's pitching, and he fouls a fastball. Out of play, right side. Got him to chase a pitch away, and he was able to fight it off. Anyway, talking about the Powell and the basketball team last night. Fly ball, right center field starting in and now having to back up a little bit as he went toward the gap in right center was Williamson, the right fielder. He makes the catch, and there's one down. And Sky Overton will bat. They'd never played at the Hodge Center, 
obviously, at USC Upstate. So instead of getting up a lot of shots here at Timmins, Nico Medved decided they were going to leave early, try to get to the arena about 30 minutes earlier than they normally would for a road game and get up some extra shots and get his team a chance to get accustomed to the uh, to the gym they were going to play in. Well, it's all well and good until you factor in the inevitable wreck on I-85 that backed up traffic. That ball hit Overton. Did it hit him in the head? Wow. He's hit by a pitch for the second straight time, and that one got him in the noggin. And a breaking ball that didn't. Spinner from Batances, and he's a one-out base runner. So anyway, to make a long and boring story, a story a little less boring, it's a chopper up the middle. Shortstop Rivera feeds to second. That's all they're going to get. Oh, wow. Now, wait a minute. They have called the runner at first, Crawford, out. Did Kevin Elsey saying that Croft, that um, Overton – slid in either too late or too aggressively at second base. Brad Harker out there arguing, and he's pointing right at the sliding path. I think Elsie's saying that he didn't go right into the bag, and he has called that a double play, and the inning is over. So Harker argues, Paladins are done. We've completed three. It's 4 nothing. We'll be back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. You can party hardy at your next Paladin tailgate extravaganza with ABC Party Rentals and Amusements. ABC can set you up with tents, chairs, tables, even Furman table linens to let everyone know your blood runneth purple. How about some inflatables or mechanical rides for the kids to really make it special? ABC Party Rentals is conveniently located near Woodruff Road and I-385. When you tailgate at a Furman football game, do it right with ABC Party Rentals and Amusements. Don't wait. Check them out now at abcgreenville.com. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, The Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, The Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and, of course, their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made-from-scratch desserts. And don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm-fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest. That is the Hungry Drover. Three inning totals, Furman four runs, four hits, no errors. And North Carolina a and no runs, three hits, one error. As Will Gaddis gets ready to pitch here in the top of the fourth inning, the argument just now breaking up between Brett Harker and Kevin Elsey out at second base. Brett just now getting to the top step of the dugout. They talked, not yelling or anything, but talked the entire inning. First pitch swinging, line drive into right, but Landon Cade coming on, and A.J. Hunt is retired, one pitch, one out. So that goes just in the book officially as a 6-4 double play so no runs no hits nobody left in the inning for Furman one out here at the top of the fourth is Timothy Rivar and he takes a strike at the knees Rivar struck out swinging leading off the second inning swing and a miss chased a breaking ball down Trying to put an end on that never-ending story. The basketball team got to the, the arena about a half an hour later than they normally would. But it didn't matter as they jumped out to an early 8-0 lead and never looked back last night. Line drive, base hit to right by Rivar. So they continue their pattern of a hit and inning off Gaddis. He's a one-out base runner. Here's Camden Williamson. He's single with one out in the second. With 
that win last night. Nico Medved's club now one win away from tying the all-time school single season record for wins at 23, set by the 1980 team. That got them an automatic buy into the quarterfinals. They won't know location or appointment until after the first of the week. First pitch to Williamson was a ball. Big swing and a pop foul down the third base side beyond the dugout, and that'll bend out of play. One and one. There were 26 teams in the tournament, so didn't have a 32-team bracket. But when we get to the quarterfinals, that will be in bracket form, but the Paladins, again, don't know where they're going. They just got the buy by virtue of having the second best RPI in the tournament at this juncture. 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball in the dirt, trying to get him to chase a slider, and he wouldn't. 2-1. The best RPI. Asheville got beat at Tennessee Martin last night. 2-1 pitch, runner goes, taking low for a ball. Whitehead's throw skips by Hebner and into center field, or actually backing it up was Love. If Hebner is able to dig that out, they would have gotten Rivard. But the throw handcuffed him. Stolen base and a runner in scoring position with one out, a 3-1 count now to the left-handed batting Camden Williamson. Caddis pitches, and a swing and a pop foul. Tell you what, this kid does not get cheated at the plate. His batting average coming in was just 130. It's not through any lack of effort with the swing. Stands right on top of the plate with a bit of an open stance and just wails at everything that comes in there. Strike three called. Fastball inside corner, locked him up. And they are two down. That's punch out number five for Gaddis. First baseman, Kyle Clary. And now Kyle Clary will bat. He grounded out to Hebner at short back in the second inning. Little chopper over the mound that Hebner got to on the grass in front of the bag. Right-handed batter, Gaddis pitching. Fastball, strike one. Aggies have had some opportunities with runners in scoring position, but they're 0 for 4 so far on the evening and should be 0 for 5 as that high, lazy fly ball into shallow right is taken by Landon K. And the inning is over. Again, a hit and a runner left. Middle of the fourth, Furman on top, 4 nothing. This is Paladin Baseball on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Everyone wants to save money. Greenville Heritage Federal Credit Union's sweetheart deal will put more cash in your pocket every month. Refinance your current car loan or finance a new car in February and get a 2% rate discount and 60 days with no payment. With rates as low as 1.99%, you could save hundreds of dollars in payments and interest. Call 370-5670 or visit GreenvilleHeritage.com to find out how much you can save. Federally insured by NCUA. Hey, you want to go to Bojangles? Sure. Oh, come on. The Bojangler Fish Filet Sandwich is back. I just said I wanted to go. It's a light, flaky, wild-caught Alaskan Pollock Filet. I know. I love the Bojangler. Served on a toasted, buttered bun, and it's only here for a limited time at participating restaurants, so you have to come. You know what? You've convinced me. People tell me I'm very persuasive. I bet they do. The Bojangler Fish Filet Sandwich is back. Try one today. Bojangles. It's Bojangler time. Bottom third of the order for the Paladins here in the fourth. Whitehead, Love, and Hebner. Cam struck out swinging in the second inning. Kansas through three has 
Struck out three, hasn't walked anybody, but he's hit two. And he delivers strike one to Whitehead. Pitch outside, one ball, one strike. Time to take a look at scores of other games in the SOCON. One final today, Greensboro beats Lafayette 14 to two. Swing and a foul. End of the minute of the catcher, Rodonia, as it's one and two. Actually, a couple of other finals in now. Western Carolina at home beat Kent State 10 to two. Foul out of play right side, and Greensboro ended up sweeping the doubleheader from Lafayette. 8-7 win in game two. Top of the seventh, Mercer trailing at 18th-ranked Eastern Carolina, 7-5. Final, Elon edges VMI, 3-2. Fastball up and in, two balls, two strikes. Top of the fifth, Citadel a 4-2 lead over visiting Dartmouth. Samford and Eastern Michigan tied 3-3, bottom of the sixth in Birmingham. Down on the way, three balls and two strikes. Wofford up 1-0 on Yale, top of the third in Spartanburg. And Mercer, East Carolina, a second game to come this evening. Foul back, three and two. One game postponed. East Tennessee State and Miami of Ohio, they'll play a doubleheader on Sunday. So those are the scores as they stand now in the SOCON. Ball four down and in. First walk for Batances. And Whitehead, a leadoff base runner here in the bottom of the fourth. Now, Dylan Love, who had a hit and a run scored in the three-run second inning. Taking his time settling into the box. Now in and ready to go. And Batances ready. Pitching. And it's down and in ball one. Now this defensive alignment with the first baseman holding on the runner. Rivar at second, cheating toward the bag. Big hole on the right side. You've got the third baseman, Melendez, about even with the bag and off the line a few steps. And the shortstop, Rivera, shading up the middle in a double play situation. So a pretty good hole on either side of the infield. And Patances misses up and in. It's two balls and no strikes. That was pitch number 58 with nobody out and one on here in the top of the fourth. A line drive, base hit into right field. That's down the right field line, and it's going to be extra bases. On his way to third is Whitehead. He'll be in standing. Love in at second with an opposite field double, and the Paladins cooking here in the fourth, second and third, and nobody else. Love hit it hard the other way. The first baseman, Clary, coming off the bag with the pitch, straining to his right to try to make the backhanded stab, just couldn't get there. And by the time Williamson was able to run it down, Howlands were at second and third, and now here's Hebner, who's driven in a run with a ground out. That came in the second inning. His first RBI of the year. He's got a chance to pick up at least one more here. And that fastball is way up and in, ball one. Outfield straight away. Corner infielders about even with the bag. Middle of the infield back. Trying to add to a 4-0 lead. And he misses badly down and in. Two balls and no strikes. Now timeout called as Ordonia as the catcher will jog out to talk to his right-hander and see if that is going to precipitate some action now down in their bullpen. Someone jogging down there. They've got three guys already down there. And now here comes a bullpen catcher. So looks like we're going to get some action up 
in the Aggie bullpen down in left field. Two balls and no strikes to count to Hebner. Second and third, nobody out. And there's ball three up and in. So there's a pitch away from loading the bases and Jabari Richards on deck. Right-handers 3-0, and there's strike one on the inside corner. They will get a right-hander starting to throw. 3-1 pitch, high ball four, and they are loaded. Walk, double, and a walk. And now here comes Richards whose two hits today match his season total coming into the day. Doubled and scored in the second, in the first, RBI single in the second. And now he's got a chance to do some big time damage with the bases loaded and nobody out. Looks like KJ McAllister, a right-hander from Greensboro throwing now. First pitch to Richards, swing and a little looping line drive into right field, that's a base hit. That'll score the runner from third to make it a 5 nothing game. Richards is three for three, his second RBI. And the bases will remain loaded. Whitehead scored easily from third. That base now occupied by Love. Hebner at second. And Richards over at first. Now Carter Grode has bounced out and been hit by a pitch. First pitch from Batances on the way, and he takes a strike. Carter 0 for 3 this season with the bases loaded, so he's due right here. No balls and a strike pitch and a line drive into right center field that's in for a base hit maybe more than one two runs are going to score Grode on his way into second he's in standing two run double and it's a three run inning for the Paladins seven nothing Furman RBI's eight and nine for Grote as Love and Hebner scored Right Richard stops at third, and now Landon K bats with runners at second and third, and still nobody out in the inning. Landon has bounced to third and struck out in two times up. So 7 0 Paladins. And K takes a strike on a pitch that really looked like it was down and away, but. KC Smith fired out the right hand, 0 and 1. The 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball strike. It's no balls and two strikes. Now they're going to bring their middle infielders in as well here with second and third. Nobody out down 7 nothing, 0-2 on K. Pitch, and he lines it to the first baseman who was playing in, reaching off to his right, made a backhanded stab. Both runners wisely back to their bags. And there's one out. K scorched that ball and nothing to show for it. First out of the inning. Now here's Brandon Elmy, who's 0 for 2. Strike out in the first, fly to right in the third. And they're going to play the middle infielders about halfway. The corners are even with the bag. Pitch, and Elmy pops it foul off to the right and out of play. So an unearned run in the first, three in the second, three so far here in the fourth. 
You've got runners at second and third and still just one out in the inning. And there's a rocket back into right field. Williamson on the run, not going to get it. It's going to be one hop, two hops and off the wall. Two runs are going to score. Elmy in at second with the double. And it's 9 nothing Paladins. He hit that ball hard and a long way the other way, and Williamson on the dead run simply couldn't get to it. Army eyes 11 and 12. And it's a five-run inning and still just one out. And here's over to the eighth man to hit. Sky's been up twice, has been hit twice by pitches. First pitch from Batances and almost hit him again. Ball one. Well, this is what happens when you've only had 21 at bats on the season and you have two hits in those 21 at bats. Overton swings and hits it in the air down the right field line. Foul. And Williamson can't get there. Jabari's three hits through the first four innings today has jumped that batting average from 095 to 238. It's good to see him swinging the bat. He's back in that spot again, leading off where he hit all last season. And apparently very comfortable there. Ball and a strike to Overton. Pitch. Strike two call and off speed pitch that got the inside corner. One ball, two strikes with Jake Crawford on deck. And he began with Whitehead walking. Love doubled. Hebner walked to load the bases. Chopper left side. Charging the third baseman, and Melendez will throw out Overton as Elmy waited and then advanced to third after the throw. So Overton retired 5 3. And now Crawford becomes the ninth man to hit in the inning. But Richard singled with the bases loaded, driving one run. Grote doubled in two more. And after Kay lined out hard to third. Brandon Elmy doubled in two. And now he's at third after the Overton ground down. And here's Crawford, who's one for two, with an RBI and a run scored. And that one skips by the catcher. And Elmy will come in and score in the wild pitch. And it's 10 nothing. That ball rebounded quickly off of the brick wall back to the catcher, Ordonez. But he didn't handle it cleanly. If he does and turns and throw, they might have a chance at Elmy because pitcher Batances was where he was supposed to be covering the plate. But the run scored easily. And now here's Crawford grounding to the first baseman and that will end the inning. But a big inning for the Paladins as they send nine batters to the plate. Five of them score. Excuse me, six of them score. And after four, it is 10 0 Furman. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, the Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, the Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and of course their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made from scratch desserts. And don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest that is the Hungry Drover. 
If you've been sidelined with an injury, sore joints, or back pain, the experts of Piedmont Orthopedic Associates can offer you both surgical and non-surgical care to get you moving again. Piedmont Orthopedic Associates' 15 surgeons and two spine physicians are all board certified and are committed to providing you with excellent orthopedic care. Visit us online at GetMovingWithPOA.com. Well, Will Gaddis back out to start this fifth inning with a 10-0 lead to protect. Dan Scott with you here at Latham Stadium. First of three between the Paladins and North Carolina A&T. And this kind of ball game is just what the doctor ordered after the 33-inning scoreless streak had mounted. Got the run in the first inning and the floodgates have opened. First pitch swinging, Jason King chops it to Hebner at short. Throws him out, one pitch, one out. Gaddis has allowed a single hit in each of the first four innings. That was pitch number 46 as we are one out deep into the fifth. He has struck out five, hasn't walked about it. Milton Rivera, the number nine hitter, singled leading off the third. Got as far as second, but Gaddis retired the next three. Breaking ball fouled back to the screen 0-1. North Carolina a and is in Greensboro. They play in one of the oldest Division I stadiums in America, built in 1926, War Memorial Stadium. One one pitch, outside two and one. They are a historically black college. They're, in fact, U.S. News and World Report just earlier this year ranked them as the top HBCU in North Carolina and the number two HBCU in the entire country. Fastball up three and one to Rivera. It's the second time in this game that Gaddis has gone to a three ball count. Three one pitch and it's hit hard but on a hop right to Crawford. His throw in time easily and they're two down. So a chance for his first one, two, three inning. Here's Greg White, the center fielder. He's 0 for 2. Center fielder, Greg White. And Gaddis winds and delivers to the right-handed hitter. And a little pop flare. Elmy will come in and make the catch on the run. Backhanded style on the grass. And it is indeed a one, two, three inning for Will Gaddis. We are halfway through the lid lifter of this three-game series. Furman 10-0 over North Carolina A&T. And you're listening to Powell and Baseball on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hey, Furman fans, it's baseball season. Here at Ingalls, we know that as you root, root, root for the home team, sometimes you want more than just peanuts and Cracker Jack. And while we do deliver on your favorite ballpark classics, we're proud to offer a packed lineup of everything you need to make your next meal a home run. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Furman Baseball and the official grocery store of Furman Athletics. Go Dins. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point offers a dining experience that will have you coming back for more time and time again. Everything is freshly made on site, including the different varieties of bread and all the baked goodies. And the menu, Atlanta Bread Company offers a wide variety from hot soups and chili to hot and cold sandwiches and paninis. Even breakfast selections topped off with your choice of piping hot coffees. Come see for yourself. You'll love it. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point. Proud sponsors of the Furman Paladins and the Dan Scott Show.
new pitcher for North Carolina A&T as we move on to the bottom of inning number five. It is right-hander K.J. McAllister, 5'11", 175-pound redshirt junior from right there in Greensboro. Watching him warm up. He's coming from down under, a sidewinder. On the season, McAllister making his seventh appearance, no record, a 476 earned run average. Five and two-thirds innings, three hits, three runs earned, has struck out two, walked four, and opponents hitting just 158 against him. He will face Cam Whitehead, who's leading off the second straight inning. Furman sent six to the plate in the last inning, or nine to the plate in the last inning, and six of them scored. Whitehead started the barrage with a base on balls. So here's McAllister, and his first pitch in for a strike. And so on the Powell and basketball team making an appearance, Jeff Beans, Matt Rafferty, Andrew Brown just walked by the window. Breaking ball floats in for a strike, 0 and 2. Marcelo Batances, four innings, eight hits, 10 runs, nine earned. Struck out three, walked two, hit two batters. Pitch just missed outside. He came in through four starts with an ERA of 2.35. And after giving up nine earned runs in four innings, as that pitch misses outside. Visitor stats to load. But it's up over five now. Two and two the count. And he misses again. It's three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch. And he walked him. So Good patience by Whitehead, who was behind 0-2 and, and ends up coaxing a leadoff walk for the second straight inning. Now Dylan Love. He takes it outside a ball. Dylan, two for two, a single and a double, and two runs scored. Takes ball one. And he swings and he foul tips it into the middle of the catcher. One ball and one strike. I had a safe lead over at first base. Strike two called a breaking ball on the inside corner. And Love behind one and two. Pitch. Breaking ball outside. Two and two the count. Brad Hebner waiting on deck. 2-2 two -two pitch. And a swing and a foul tip into the mid of Ordonia. Strike three. Love is retired for the first time. One out. First strikeout for McAllister. And the fourth overall for Aggies pitching. Now, Hebner, an RBI ground out. He's also walked and scored. 
And he takes it low, ball one. Ten nothing Paladins. Bottom of the fifth. Breaking ball strike. One and one. Why had it first one down? And a ground ball past the first baseman into right field toward the line. That's a base hit. That will get Whitehead around to third. And Hebner. Safe at first. That is nine hits now for the Paladins. And Jabari Richards comes to the plate. He is a perfect four for four. Or three for three, excuse me. A double, two singles, two RBIs, two runs scored. And an RBI situation here with runners on the corners and one out. And he takes a big swing and comes up empty, 0-1. Give him some room out in left center field. Breaking ball strike on the outside corner, and he's behind 0 and 2. Sidearm breaking ball floated in and came back over the outside corner. So Jabari in a hole at 0 and 2. Right hander pitching, and it's down and in. 1 and 2. Whitehead at third, Hebner at first, one out. Bottom five. One two pitch, and he fouls it out of play left side. So the count holding and a ball and two strikes on Richards. McAllister pitching, and it's way outside in the dirt. Good stop by Ordonez. Two and two. With two strikes, wide out in center. Has moved over and was shading him towards left center. Now it looks like he's going to play him about straight away, maybe a couple steps back towards right center. He is. One two pitch, or, or two two pitch rather, and it's fouled away again. So Jabari into battle mode. Two and two the count. Pitching, and he fouls one off the hands right back into the screen. So the count holding it two and two. Carter Grote on deck. And McAllister with the break even pitch again. Outside ball three. So he was behind 0-2. Has worked the count full at three balls and two strikes. And now a payoff pitch coming. Nope, pull off to third and a look back at first. Now McAllister gets the sign. And the 3-2. High ball four. That's a good at bat by Richards. He was down, or plate appearance. He was down 0-2, like Whitehead in the inning. And battles back and coaxes a walk. So the bases are loaded for Carter Grote. Ordonez, the catcher, goes out. Third baseman Melendez, second baseman Rivar all come in to talk to the right-hander. Like we're going to get some action down in their bullpen again. Carter Grote, one for two, had the two-run double and the six-run fourth. It's been hit by a pitch, bounced to third. So 
looking to play add on to what is already a 10 nothing lead. First pitch, way outside with the breaking ball, ball one. Whitehead at third, Hebner at second, Richards at first, the 1 0. Outside, 2 and 0. And a snap throw down to third. And standing right on the bag was Whitehead. Two and zero oh, pitch, line drive, right center field. That is going to be up the gap and is going to go all the way to the wall. That's going to clear the bases. Grode around second, on his way to third. The throw not in time. That is a three-run triple for Carter Grote, and it's 13-0 Paladins. And Carter with five RBIs in the game, now 12 on the season. Here comes Ben Hall, and we are going to have an Atlanta Bread Company call to the bullpen. So breaking the action as Furman continuing to roll it up here in the fifth. 13-0. Back to tell you about the new pitcher after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hey, Furman fans, it's baseball season. Here at Ingalls, we know that as you root, root, root for the home team, sometimes you want more than just peanuts and Cracker Jack. And while we do deliver 44. favorite ballpark classics, we're proud to offer a packed lineup of everything you need to make your next meal a home run. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Furman Baseball and the official grocery store of Furman Athletics. Go Dins. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point offers a dining experience that will have you coming back for more time and time again. Everything is freshly made on site, including the different varieties of bread and all the baked goodies. And the menu, Atlanta Bread Company offers a wide variety from hot soups and chili to hot and cold sandwiches and paninis. Even breakfast selections topped off with your choice of piping hot coffees. Come see for yourself. You'll love it. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point. Proud sponsors of the Furman Paladins and the Dan Scott Show. New pitcher for the Aggies is right hander Josh Steikleather, six foot, 175 pound junior from Four Oaks, North Carolina. He came to the Aggies by way of Southeastern Community College. Stike Leather making his sixth appearance, no record of 720 earned run average. Five innings, seven hits, four runs earned. Five strikeouts, two walks. And the opposition hitting 333 against him. McAllister goes a third of an inning. Two hits, Three runs all earned so far, and the runner at third wrote his responsibility. Two walks and one strikeout. So a week and a half's worth of offensive frustration being taken out on this Aggie pitching staff here in the Friday opener between these teams. 13 runs and 10 hits, and we are just in the bottom of the fifth inning. Tomorrow, Grant Sherman gets the call in game two for the Paladins. Three and one on the season and throwing the ball very, very well. And now Landon K. Looking at the lineup now, K is the only Paladin who hasn't reached base. And only one of two without a hit so far. Take strike one from Stike Leather. He is bounced the third struck out and then hit a rocket right at the first baseman his last time with the infield in. 
The 0 1. This is inside. And it's a ball and a strike. Rode at third. He had the three run triple just a moment ago. One out in the inning. Pitch. Big breaking ball strike on the inside corner. One and two. Ryander pauses at the belt. The one-two pitch. And a little roller. Third base side. Steinkleather gets off the mound and throws. And it hit Kay in the back and rolls into foul territory. Landon will make it to second. Grote will score, and it's 14-0. Grote was not coming until the error by the pitcher, so that'll be an unearned run, at least for the time being. And Kay... First also safe and advances to second on the air. Here's Brandon Elmy, two-run double his last time. One for three, he scored a run. And he grounds it towards the hole. It's short, nice backhanded pickup on the short hop by Rivera, but his throw in the dirt and unable to be handled by Clary at first. Elmy might have beaten it anyway. That'll be an infield single. Kay stays where he was at second base. Now Overton, who's been hit twice by pitches, scored a run, two stolen bases, and he's bounced to third. 14-0 Paladins. And Sky swings and misses. Still just one out in the inning. Outfield straight away. Ground ball towards short. Bobbled by Rivera, he recovers, throws in time to get Overton at first, and they are two down. Runners advance, K to third, Elmy to second. And with two away, Jake Crawford was in his very position last inning. Ninth man to hit in the inning. And he grounded out to the first baseman. So the Paladins have batted around for the second straight inning. Chance for some two out damage here. And Stike Leather drops a breaking ball in for a strike 0 1. Four runs in the inning, three coming on the triple by Grote. That's 14 0 Paladins. Chopper over by the third base dugout. It's 0 2 on Crawford. Jake has singled in a run and scored. That came in the three-run second. And since then has bounced into a double play and hit that grounder to first. 0-2 pitch coming from Steinkleather. Here it is. And he bounced that one up there. Short hop to catcher. Rolled by him all the way to the backstop. Scoring from third is Kay. It's 15-0. And Elmy will stop at third base. Rodonez did everything he could. Ball hitting in front of the plate. He slid to his right, but when it bit, it hopped up and off of his right shoulder back to the backstop. And now it's one and two. And another one in the dirt. He stops this one two and two. Break-even pitch. 
Lined in the center field, base hit. Elmy will score from third. And it's 16-0. Crawford's second hit, second run batted in. And now Cam Whitehead will hit for the second time in the inning. Cam led off the inning with a walk and scored. And he swings and he fouls it back to the right out of play. Dylan Love on deck. Pitch to Whitehead. Breaking ball misses inside. One and one. Cam over one officially has walked twice and scored both times. It's leading off the fourth inning and this fifth inning. Fouls it back off to the right out of play. One and two. Stike Leather wants a new baseball. They've got a right-hander and a left-hander throwing in their bullpen now. Crawford at first, two down. Six runs in again, second straight inning. That Furman has put six runs on the board. They lead it 16-0. Two and two now the count to Cam Whitehead. Break even pitch. Upstairs, three and two. So Crawford will be going on the pitch. There he goes, the payoff. Ground ball right side, second baseman Rivard. A couple of steps to his left, fields and throws, and the inning is over. But another six-run inning for the Paladins. And we've completed five here at Latham Stadium. Furman up 16-0. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Stuck in a state of falling behind? Struggling to keep up with your kids, finances, insurance? Then let State Farm agent Steve Borkland in Traveler's Rest help you simplify and get to a better state. Because with Steve handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time for everything else. More money, too, because adding State Farm policies could mean earning discounts worth up to 40%. That's money Steve can help you put towards a college savings plan. Call State Farm agent Steve Borkland today and get to a better state with State Farm. At SC Telco Federal Credit Union, we're passionate about helping to improve the financial lives of our members. SC Telco is the first financial institution in South Carolina to offer a Price Lake Savings Account. The Save to Win account allows members to save money, earn interest, and have the chance to win cash prizes. When you're in front of us, you're the only person that matters. Find a location near you at sctelco.com. SC Telco looks forward to serving you. SC Telco is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Top of the sixth inning. Paladins leading it 16-0. Back-to-back six-run innings for Brett Harker's club. Two, three, and four to face Will Gaddis here in the sixth. Melendez, Ordonez, and Hunt. Melendez 0 for 2. Tried to bunt his way on last time, and Crawford threw him out on a fine play. Ball one low. And 
And there's strike one on the inside corner. One and one. Gaddis working quickly, and he misses high. Two and oh. Or a two and one, excuse me. Pitch. Foul out of play, two and two. Gaddis winds the break even pitch. And he fouled it out of play left side again. After giving up single hits in each of the first four, Gaddis retired him in order in the fifth, so he set down five straight. 2-2. Two -two. Make it six. Called strike three, breaking ball. And there's one out. That's... Six strikeouts for Will. He's not walked about it. It's only 58 pitches, one out deep into the sixth inning. He is cruising right now. Ordonia has to catch her one for two, a double, a bouncer to third. And a big swing, and he chops it foul past Ben Hall in the third base coaching box. Balls and a strike, the pitch. Swing and a miss at a pitch in the dirt. 0 and 2. Long look into Whitehead. Now he's going to back off and try it again. Here's the 0-2, and he chased a breaking ball in the dirt. Strike three, Whitehead's throw to first will complete the strikeout. Two to three on the out. Two down, seven strikeouts for Gaddis. Designated hitter, A.J. Hunt. And now Hunt, who struck out looking in a line to right. First pitch from Gaddis. Fastball low. The 1 0. There's a strike call. 1 and 1. Giving him some room out of left center field. And field is back. Breaking ball, strike two call. Fouls that one out of play right side. Cal holds it 0-2. Should Hunt reach, Rivar would be next. One ball and two strikes to count. Gaddis pitching. And he just got a piece of that one. Off the end of the bat. Fouled it over by the on-deck circle first base side. Count holding a one and two. Gaddis trying to retire him in order and strike out the side. Winds and pitches and a breaking ball in the dirt. Two and two the count. Casey Smith getting a new supply of baseballs from the Furman dugout. Two and two the count. Pitch. And a fly ball back into right, chasing his K. He's got it, and the inning is over. Three up and three down for the second straight inning, middle of the sixth. All Furman here at Latham. Powell is on top, 16-0. And you're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. 
When you go in search of a fence company, what's your criteria? Experience? Trust? A company that gets it right the first time and stand behind its work? Then your search is over. Faulkner Fence has been Greenville's fence company for more than 40 years. Ed Faulkner started the business, and now Sun Todd continues the tradition of excellence. So regardless of your fencing needs, commercial, industrial, or residential, trust the company that Greenville has trusted for over four decades. Faulkner Fence, 864-271-4626, or online at Faulkner Fence Company. Hi, Furman fans. Dan Scott here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. Bottom six and a new pitcher for the Aggies. This time it's left-hander Jonah Owenby. Six 180-pound junior from Fort Myers, Florida. Coming into the program via State College of Jacksonville. Owenby on the season making appearance number six. He started one game, he's one and one with an even nine earned run average. Nine innings, 16 hits, 11 runs. Nine earned, eight strikeouts, three walks, and opponents hitting 400 off of him. K.J. McAllister went a third of an inning in the fifth. Two runs, or two hits, four runs, three earned. Two walks, a strikeout. Stike Leather, two-thirds of an inning. Two hits, two runs, none earned. No walks or strikeouts. So it's Dylan Love leading off. The number eight hitter. And the lefty Owenby going to work on him. And it's lined over the leaping second baseman, Rivar, into right field, a base hit, and Love has a three-hit game. hit number 13 for the Paladins. And now Hebner, who's one for two with an RBI and two runs scored. Oh, he's got a kind of a funny motion as he starts toward the plate, it all looks normal and it's almost like he stops his arm and then slings the ball to the plate. That ball's hit in the air to center field. White has it tracked and makes the catch and there's one out. That's 16 nothing. This is one of those games, Kim Pettis, you wish you could apply the ESPN Classic rule. Just due to time considerations, we move further ahead in the action. <laughs> Here's Jabari Richards, average up to 208 with his three hits today. And make it four hits as he lines that one in the left field, a base hit. And good to see one off a left-hander, and number two hitting the ball hard the other way. Hopefully, Jabari is back. Carter Groats had a big day, five RBIs. Two-run double in the fourth, three-run triple in the fifth. Be ready to go to work on him. First pitch. Breaking ball drops in for a strike. Two 
Two on, one out. Outfield straight away for Grote. Owenby's pitch. And he hit it off the end of the bat into the front opening of the first base dugout. Grote behind, no balls and two strikes. Landed K on deck. Love at second, Richards at first. The 0-2, and he hit him. Came inside with a fastball, and he got him in the back. Second time that Carter's been hit by a pitch. That's four Furman batters that have been hit by pitches. Over to twice and Grote twice. Love advances to third. Richards now at second. And Landon K. O for four, did reach on an error and score a run in the last inning. Batting with the bases loaded for the first time this year. And he swings and he hits it into center field, shallow, but coming on to make the catch. On the run is White, and they are two down. So K wearing the collar. That's 0 for First 5 for Landon. Brandon Elmy. And now Brandon Elmy will bat with the bases loaded and two down. Brandon's 0 for 2 in this situation so far this year. And Owen B misses outside ball one. So despite the two hits and the base on balls, Owen B trying to get out of the inning unscathed. And they've only done that once, and that was back in the third. The 1-0. Off speed down and away. 2-0. Pitch. Fly ball, center. That is going to be caught on a dive coming straight toward the infield by Greg White. And that'll end the inning. That's a heck of a play. Put a star by that one for the Aggie center fielder. Saved at least two runs and keeps Furman off the board here in the six. Paladins leave them loaded. Off we go to the seventh. And Furman still leading it. 16 nothing. We'll return after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hey, Furman fans, it's baseball season. Here at Ingalls, we know that as you root, root, root for the home team, sometimes you want more than just peanuts and Cracker Jack. And while we do deliver on your favorite ballpark classics, we're proud to offer a packed lineup of everything you need to make your next meal a home run. Ingles, a proud sponsor of Furman Baseball and the official grocery store of Furman Athletics. Go Dins. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point offers a dining experience that will have you coming back for more time and time again. Everything is freshly made on site, including the different varieties of bread and all the baked goodies. And the menu, Atlanta Bread Company offers a wide variety from hot soups and chili to hot and cold sandwiches and paninis even breakfast selections topped off with your choice of piping hot coffees. Come see for yourself. You'll love it. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point, proud sponsors of the Furman Paladins and the Dan Scott Show. Six inning totals for the Paladins, 16 runs, 14 hits, no errors. And for North Carolina A&T, no runs, four hits, and two left on. Will Gaddis will get an early rest. He is done after six innings and just 68 pitches. Four hits, no runs, no walks, struck out seven and dropped his ERA down to 1.97 in line for his second win of the season. And on to pitch for the Paladins for just the second time this year. 
is right-hander Caton Harwood, the transfer from Appalachian State, 6'3", 205 pound, academically a senior, does have another year of eligibility left. He's made that one appearance, a nine earned run average, one inning, two hits, two runs, one earned, a walk, a strikeout. Gave up a home run. And his first pitch to the number five hitter, Timothy Rivar, is inside ball one. As he set out last year recovering from Tommy John surgery. This is high, 2-0. And a chopper foul. Rivar one for two, singled in the fourth. That's the last hit they got. It came with one out. And then Gaddis retired the last eight he faced. 2-1 pitch. Off-speed pitch. Tapped slowly left side. Charging Crawford from almost behind the mound. The third baseman picked it and threw him out on the run. One ounce. Here's Camden Williamson, also one for two. Single in the second and struck out looking in the fourth. And Harwood's first pitch to the left-handed batter way outside a ball. Flair that will drop into right field for a base hit. Kay gets it back to the infield. Williamson, his second hit. And that ends the streak of nine straight Aggie batters that have been retired by Furman pitching. Say hello to the Shermans. Listening in Gulf Shores, Alabama, where Grant's little brother, and that's in quotes, 6'3", 235-pound Mason <laughs> playing for the uh, Knoxville Fairgut Admirals varsity team. Started off the season 6-0, and winning the Gulf Coast Classic Tournament. He says they'll see everybody at Wofford next weekend. Good stuff. One ball and no strikes to Kyle Clary, and Harwood delivers a strike. It's 1-1. One and one. Sixteen-nothing Paladins here in the top of the seventh inning. And Harwood will turn and throw to first. Now the one one. Swing and a miss. And chase a fastball up and in. One and two. And now Brett Harker asks for time and jogs out almost at a sprint to talk to Harwood. It was a very brief conversation and he turns and jogs back. So ahead one and two to Clary. The runner at first and one down. Pitch and it's popped up out behind first and the second baseman Love back on the grass about six or seven feet away from the line makes the catch and there are two down. Now Jason King with two outs, 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground ball to short. Takes a strike, going one. And he lifts one foul down beyond third. No balls and two strikes. Powell has got a run in the first three in the second, and then put six runs up in each of the fourth and fifth innings. Lead at 16-0. And there's ball one high, one and two. 
Six shutout innings for Will Gannis, and now it's Harwood here in the seventh with a runner at first and two down. The one-two pitch to King, and he just missed the inside corner. Two and two. Now the big right-hander with the pause at the letters to break even, and it's tap foul behind the plate. Count holding at two balls and two strikes. Harwood trying to gain the measure of King here and end the inning. Break even again, and it's popped up on the infield. Left side. Shortstop Hebner calling off Crawford, and the inning is over. They get a hit. They strand a runner. Seventh inning stretch. All Furman. Paladin's up 16 right, nothing, And this is the Furman IMG Sports Network. I was surprised recently when I learned that Americans spend $80 billion a year on illegal sports gambling. Sure, that's spread out over millions of gamblers, but still it makes you wonder where that money's coming from. Unfortunately, too often it's coming from money that was intended to buy groceries, pay the mortgage, or even put children through college. If gambling's had a negative impact on your life, call the SC Gambling Hotline toll-free at 877-452-5150. 55. Help is confidential and available 24 hours a day. A message from the South Carolina Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. Palmetto Pride, South Carolina's anti-litter and beautification organization, would like you to do your part to help keep South Carolina beautiful. Don't litter. Report litter bugs and litter hotspots by calling the Litter Buster Hotline at 1-877-7-LITTER or by using our Trash Tracker app. Jonah Owen be on for his second inning of relief work. He pitched out of a bases loaded one out jam in the six. Got back to back shallow fly balls to center by Kay and Elmy. The last one, a diving catch, robbing Elmy of a hit and a couple of runs batted in. So now it's Overton leading it off. Then Jake Crawford, Cam Whitehead scheduled here, bottom of the seventh. And the left-hander's first pitch is a breaking ball. Hit back in the left. That is going to be in for extra bases. Going to go all the way to the wall. Overton will coast into second as King brings the throw in towards third. And Overton with a leadoff double, his first hit. He's one for three. Third baseman, Jake Crawford. Basketball boys are big leaguing them. They got here in about the fourth, and they're leaving in the seventh. Crawford with two hits, two runs batted in. He scored a run. And Owen B. misses down and away, ball one. So now of the nine hitters in the lineup, everybody with a base hit except for Landon Kay. And he has reached and scored a run. Ground ball right side, backhanded by the first baseman. Long underhanded toss to Owen B. Covering. And he got him for the first down. Moving up to third was over to nice play by Clary. One out. Now Cam Whitehead. I take back what I said about K. Whitehead does not have a hit, but he's walked twice and scored two runs. He's 0 for 2. First pitch to him. Big sweeping breaking ball that drops on the inside corner for a strike. Dylan Love on deck. He's got three hits in the game. The 0-1. Outside, Carter Grote 
two hits and five RBIs, but I think the the biggest and most important story in this game is Jabari Richards. Four for four batting leadoff with two RBIs, three runs scored, and he's drawn a walk. Ball in the dirt, two and one to Whitehead. When you come in at 095, two for 21, and you go four for four, your batting average jumps all the way up to 240. 2 1. Whitehead rifles one foul down the left field side. That'll ricochet off the fence and down into the bullpen. Two and two. Runner at third, one out. I wouldn't be pitching. And a foul back to the screen. Count holding it two and two on Whitehead with Love on deck. Again, the break even. And he reaches for it, taps it down the third baseline, but foul. So Overton, who was moving on contact, will head back to the to a third. And Whitehead back to the plate with a count holding at two balls and two strikes. Now I want to be ready to go again. The 2-2 pitch to Whitehead. And it's in the air down the right field line. Williamson chasing into foul territory, and he made the running catch. Man, he went a long, long way to get that. But tagging at third and scoring is Overton to make it 17 nothing. So a productive out anyway. Sacrifice fly in RBI number seven for Cam Whitehead. Two down. And now Dylan Love at the plate looking for his fourth hit. Two singles, a double, two runs scored. The only time they got him out, he struck out swinging for one of the outs in the six-run fifth. And he takes that down low a ball. So no Paladin had had a four-hit game. Prior to tonight, Richards has done it, and now Love attempting to do it. He fouls that one off. It's one and one. Brandon Elmy's had three three-hit games. Kay and Grote have each had two three-hit games, but until tonight, no four-hit games in the lineup. Two and one is that pitch missed outside. 17-0 Palamas here in the bottom of the seventh. Reaches for one and pops it foul over the first base dugout. And zero attempt by the fans in the first base stands. That was a poor effort. Two and two. OMB pitching. And a ground ball to short, charging Rivera. Running throw from the grass in time. And the inning is over. But the Paladins add on another run. A hit and nobody left after 7-17-0 seven, Furman. This is Paladin Baseball on the Furman IMG Sports Network. When it comes to commercial vehicles, break through the clutter with a new Sprinter Worker from Freightliner. Otherwise, your work van isn't getting it done. The Sprinter Worker carries over a ton and a half with over 300 cubic feet of space and on match safety. It starts at just $32,495 with a service interval of up to 20,000 miles. 
huge capacity, starting at just $32,495. From Christopher Trucks, Whitehorse at I-85, ChristopherTrucks.com. Spirit Communications, built for your business and the upstate's choice for voice, data, internet, and fiber services. Let us show you the future with our cutting-edge, unified cloud-based products backed with live 24-7 customer support. Call 517-1200 or click spiritcom.com. Spirit Communications is a proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. Spirit Communications, keeping you connected. Changes for the Paladins. New left fielder is Trey Jackson. The new catcher is Jason Costa. Or is that Boswell? And the new pitcher is freshman Andrew Holweger. Holweger, 6'3", 175-pound freshman from Springboro, Ohio. Making his second appearance. No record, no ERA, an inning, a hit, and that's it. Living out for the Yankees, Number nine hitter, Milton Rivera, leading it off here in the top of the eighth inning. One for two, and Holweger's first pitch to him, swing and a miss on a pitch down and in, ball one. Did we determine officially is that eight or nine behind the plate? It is Boswell. Okay. So it's John Michael Boswell catching, swing and a miss, and that pitch gets through Boswell, 0-2. So Jackson in left, replacing Carter Grote. Boswell behind the plate, replacing Whitehead. And Holweger on the mound. The 0-2 pitch, high and away. Everything else, at least at the moment, stays the same. One, two, and a foul back to the backstop. Caton Harwood, an inning, a base hit, and that's it. Zeroes the rest of the way across. Now the freshman Holweger dealing the one-two. Ground ball to third. Crawford to his left, fields, throws, and he got him in a close play, one out. Back to the top of the order for White. 0 for three. Center fielder, Greg White. Right-handed batter and Holweger winds and delivers, and he pours a fastball in for a strike. 0 and 1. It's one of the good young arms. Brad Harker and company have brought into this program, and that one's grounded hard back to the middle. Diving stop by Hebner behind the bag from his knees to throw a little wide, and that'll be an infield base hit. And goes into the dugout, or did it? Yeah, it did, so it'll also be a throwing error. Look for a moment like he was going to turn in a highlight play there, but the throw from the knees from almost directly behind the bag had a tail on it toward the home plate side of the bag, and Elmy couldn't get to it. That's the first error for the Paladins, fourth of the season for Hebner. 
Now Melendez bats with the runner at second and one out. He is 0 for 3, struck out twice. Now Boswell and Holwayer can't get together, so the catcher will jog out to talk to his pitcher. Meanwhile, more scores. These are all finals now. First game of a doubleheader, Greensboro beats Lafayette 14-2. First pitch in the dirt, and it gets away from Boswell, and that'll allow the runner to advance the third. Western Carolina, 10-2 win over Kent State. Greensboro completed the doubleheader sweep, 8-7 over Lafayette. Mercer, a 10-7 win at East Carolina in the first of two. Line drive, base hit in the left field, and that will take care of the shutout. Scoring from third is White. It's 17 to 1. At the moment, that's an unearned run. But an RBI for Melendez is sixth of the season. And now it's Don Ordonez, the catcher, who's one for three. He doubled his first time up way back in the first inning. Second game of that Mercer East Carolina doubleheader. Going to first pitch here in about 10 minutes. Big swing and a foul back. East Tennessee State at Miami of Ohio postponed. They'll play two on Sunday. Elon beats VMI 3-2. Citadel 5-4 winner over Dartmouth. Sanford edges Eastern Michigan 4-3. Big breaking ball stays high, 1-1. One one. Top of the eighth inning, Yell batting at Wofford, trailing 2-1. And that's it as far as the SOCON is concerned. Smash, fair, down the third baseline. Into the bullpen. Jackson over to digging out, having trouble. They're going to wave the runner around. He's going to score. Double by Ordonez. And it's 17 to 2. That'll make the, or should make the white run earned. And that's three straight hits off of Holweger after they got the, after he got the first down of the inning. Now A.J. Hunt 0 for 3. And a ground ball up the middle. Hebner to his left. Fields from behind the bag. Throws low, but dug out by Elmi. And they are two away. Ordonez advances to third. Now coming to the plate, second baseman, Timothy Rivar. So now Rivar, who's one for three. Give Trey Jackson an error out in left field. Rivar pops it foul out of play, first base side. As he had trouble coming up with that ball in foul territory. So the Melendez run is unearned. And that's the second error of the inning on the Paladins. The 0-1. Breaking ball stays high. One ball and one strike. And that one's low. Two and one. Camden Williamson would be next. 
play here in the eighth inning, 17-2 Palins. And now time called. Now ready, Holwiger's 2-1. Fly ball to right. Landon K has it measured, and the inning is over. They played a couple of runs, two hits, two errors, and a runner left. Middle of the eighth, Furman leads at 17 to two. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24 seven to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. There's a reason why year after year more people trust Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. See Dan Joyner Realtors to get the job done. It's because we deliver the highest level of real estate services with the utmost integrity, quality, and professionalism. We love what we do, and it shows in every transaction. We've been the undisputed upstate market leader for over 20 years because we do what's right, we handle every transaction with a smile, and we're committed to making your home journey the best it can be. For your best move ever, contact Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. See Dan Joyner Realtors today. Visit cdanjoyner.com and let's get started. Is coming to bat for what should be the final time, leading at 17 2. Jonah Owenby still out there. He's given up a run in two innings, left hander, and Brett Hebner takes it down low a ball. Hebner one for three officially with an RBI and a couple of runs scored. He's drawn a walk. And that one's outside. And a line drive caught by the first baseman. Take a hit away from Hebner, one down, hit it hard the other way, but Clary able to come down with it. And now Jabari Richards, who's four for four with a walk, two RBIs, three runs scored. He is trying to become just the 13th player in program history to get five hits in a game. And he takes a breaking ball down low, ball one. The last time it was done was May 14th, 2003. Taylor Johnson did it against UNCG. There's ball two inside. Two and oh. So he's got a chance to go into the record books with a base hit here. Three and oh, so he takes that one low. Well, regardless of what happens, it's just been good to see him swinging the bat like we know he can because he's such an integral part of this lineup. Ooh, that one hit him right in the back. So there will be no five hits, although I guess technically. If you wanted to count that one. Four, four hits of the get hit, right? Yeah. On base six times in the game. In the leadoff spot, that'll get it done. Now Trey Jackson... Will bat for just the second time this year. 
Right-handed batter, he takes a strike. 0 for 1. Jackson, a freshman outfielder from College Park, Georgia. Big breaking ball from Owen, be in for a strike. Owen B has done nothing else. If he gets out of or is able to finish this inning, he has saved much of their bullpen in a 17 2 game. There's a fly ball into right center, but getting over the right fielder, Williamson, who puts it away, and they're two down. Patanza started, went four, was charged with 10 runs, nine earned. It took McAllister and Stike Leather to complete the fifth. And Owen became on to start the sixth. He's been out there ever since. Here's Landon K. 0 for 5. And takes it outside a ball. And isn't it that way it, it works? You got a game like this, 17 runs, 15 hits, and there's always that one guy. And today it happens to be Landon. He has reached on an error and scored a run. Hits that one off the end of the bat. Squibbed it over to Brandon Elmy in the on-deck circle. Ball and a strike. And now the lefty bringing the 1-1. One -one. Just misses outside. 2-1 the count. If you haven't seen and you want to catch up with some of the things going on in the Furman Athletic Department, Check out my YouTube page, just Dan Scott Show on YouTube. There's a strike called two and two. Just in the last week, for instance, interview today posted with David Abernathy, the strength and conditioning coach. Did a half an hour with Mike Buddy yesterday, the athletic director. After every game, we post post-game interviews with Brett Harker. Nico Medved is there post-game from last night's basketball win. Clay Hendricks from a couple of weeks ago at the start of spring practice, the football coach. All there at the Dan Scott Show YouTube page. Fly ball into center. White backing, catching, and the inning is over, and Landon Kay will wear the collar for the game. But... Paladins head to the ninth, leading it 17-2. And we'll be back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. You can party hardy at your next Paladin tailgate extravaganza with ABC Party Rentals and Amusements. ABC can set you up with tents, chairs, tables, even Furman table linens to let everyone know your blood runneth purple. How about some inflatables or mechanical rides for the kids to really make it special? ABC Party Rentals is conveniently located near Woodruff Road and I-385. When you tailgate at a Furman football game, do it right with ABC Party Rentals and Amusements. Don't wait. Check them out now at ABC Green Built.com. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, The Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, The Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and of course their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made-from-scratch desserts, and don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm-fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest that is the Hungry Drover. Ninth inning. Paladins up 17-2 and on to close it out. 
making his first appearance of the season is senior right-hander Paul Barnhill from Charlotte. As far as we know, no other changes in the Paladin lineup. Holweger. An inning, three hits, two runs, one earned. Did not walk or strike out a batter. Powell and pitching has not walked anybody in the game. All seven strikeouts, courtesy of starter Will Gaddis. And now it's Barnhill. Try and close it out. First batter he'll face is Camden Williamson, the left-handed batter. And first pitch is outside a ball. It's Gaddis for six. Caton Harwood, a scoreless inning. Holweger in the eighth, and now Barnhill in the ninth. And it's high and away, two balls and no strikes. Gaddis is going to improve to two and two on the season. Dropped his ERA below two as Barnhill misses high three and oh. And Marcelo Batances will fall to two and two. And he's, his ERA jumped from 235 at game's beginning up to an even five. I got screened by the guy walking in front of me. Did that hit him or was that ball four? It, it doinked him. It doinked him, says Todd Duke. That's a, an official baseball term. So now Kyle Clary, First 0 Kyle for 3. Clary. And Barnhill working from the stretch. Breaking ball on the inside corner, a strike. Four o'clock tomorrow. 3.45 pregame time. Another breaking ball that missed inside this time, one and one. Grant Sherman gets the start for the Paladins looking for his fourth win of the season. The one one chop foul third base side. It's one and two. So a ball and two strikes to Clary. Breaking ball strike three called. Dropped it on the outside corner, and there's one out. First strikeout for Barnhill, number eight for Paladin pitching. And now Jason King will bat. King's 0 for 3, and he takes ball one. Breaking ball strike. One and one. Outfield straight away. Barnhill with the one one pitch. Strike two called. Another breaking ball outside corner. And big right hander now ahead one and two. After the game, we'll record that video interview with Brett Harker and then share the link on all of our social media. Here's a flare that will drop into center field for a base hit. And they've got two on with one out for the number nine hitter, Milton Rivera. Didn't hit it hard, just dumped it out into shallow center. 
And now Rivera, who's one for three, singled in the second, and since then has grounded out twice to Crawford at third. First pitch from Barnhill. Breaking ball, strike one call. A little 5-4-3 to end this one. Breaking ball, strike two called inside corner. And Barnhill's breaking ball has looked very, very good here in this ninth. No balls and two strikes. Leadoff hitter Greg White on deck. The 0-2. And another breaking ball. This one fouled off. Out of play. So ready to do it again here on the 0-2 pitch with runners at first and second and one out in the ninth. Fastball off the glove of Boswell. Back to the backstop and both runners will advance. That'll be a pass ball. Had to reach off to his right for it, but ball that he should have been able to pick. So now a base hit by Rivera could get a couple of runs in. One and two the count. Barnhill with the set and the pitch. And he offered, no he didn't. Started at a breaking ball that bounced in front of the plate. but Held up. Two and two. Seems ahead, 0-2. Oh now it's two balls and two strikes. Runners now at second and third. Break even pitch. And he went after that one that bounced in the ground in front of the plate. Home plate umpire. KC Smith immediately pointed at him and said, yes, he did. Second strikeout for Barnhill. And now we go back to the top of the order for Greg White, who's one for four, had an infield single in the last inning and scored the first of their two runs. Paladins and out away. And the first pitch from Barnhill is breaking ball, strike one. Right-hander with the pause at the letters. And a ground ball hit the second. Love fields. He throws. And that's your ball game. Paladins win it 17-2. Snapped the four-game losing streak. Got the scoreless inning streak out of the way in the very first inning. And rolled in this one behind a 15-hit performance offensively. And Will Gaddis in the bullpen doing the job on the mound. 17 to the final. Back to run you through the numbers and wrap this up after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Everyone wants to save money. Greenville Heritage Federal Credit Union's sweetheart deal will put more cash in your pocket every month. Refinance your current car loan or finance a new car in February and get a 2% rate discount and 60 days with no payment. With rates as low as 1.99%, you could save hundreds of dollars in payments and interest. Call 370-5670 or visit GreenvilleHeritage.com to find out how much you can save. Federally insured by NCUA. Hey, you want to go to Bojangles? Sure. Oh, come on. The Bojangler fish fillet sandwich is back. I just said I wanted to go. It's a light, flaky, wild-caught Alaskan Pollock fillet. I know. I love the Bojangler. Served on a toasted butter. 